also for a ministry, like they want, they're, 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 they're using social for an objective, right? If it's to reach the lost, then they want to know, are we reaching the lost? Or are we being entertaining to kids? We don't want to be just entertaining the kids. We want to reach the lost. Mm -hmm. What's the balance between that, that you found with like, you know, people go online. I'm sure that guy was posting content that was good for the last, however long that got him to 600 subscribers. But what do you think the main difference was that got him to 1.6 million? Was it the content? Was it the frequency? Was it the, I don't know, I have no clue. And like, how are you making sure that it's contributing to the main goal that the people have? Because mm -hmm. again, I feel like, you know, if I, I posted my son, let's say, and I posted my son's video and it probably has over 2 million views with like 500,000 likes. But that is never going to get me the people that I like to reach, right? Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, I know I could just keep posting and pick stuff on my son all day. But like my goal isn't a million followers on the platform. My goal is to build a million of the people that I feel like God's called me to influence. And how do you find that balance? And then also, what's the difference, do you think, from that guy 600 to 1.6? What was the difference in content, content frequency, et cetera? Totally. Well, this is the basic framework that I run people through right when they get started. Number one, I ask them three questions. Who is your dream viewer? Who do you know that you're called to serve? Who, who is on the other side of the camera? How old are they? What gender are they? Are they saved? Are they not saved? Are they a business owner? Are they not a business owner? Uh, are they in the United States? Are they not in the United States? So we narrow down, we get as niche specific as possible with who you feel called to actually serve and reach online. Then number two, what's your dream piece of content? What kind of content do you see yourself making the most and actually enjoying it? Do you like short form? Do you like medium form? Do you like long form? Do you like audio? Do you like music? Do you like teaching? Do you like entertaining? We find out what they would really love to do and enjoy doing. And then number three, what's your dream topic? If you could preach or teach one topic every day till the rapture, every day until you die, what would you love to talk about all the time and never get burned out about? And I take those three things and then I tell them, go find three to five creators that are already pumping out content and having success that meet those requirements. And what we're going to do is we're going to find out how they do it. We're going to put our own twist on it and make it your own. And that seems to be the most success because a lot of people, they'll just start posting content because like a Christian might see if I listening to Gary V's podcast, this is what I did. Actually, this is a prime example. I got onto TikTok. And because I listened to all this business stuff and I, I listened to the word I could preach, but immediately I thought, oh, Gary V, business, marketing. Therefore, I started TikTok about business and marketing. But that wasn't what I wanted to do. It wasn't what I was called to do. I had to identify those things on my own. So the first 30 days I posted on TikTok, I had no success. I think I had like 300 people follow me. No success. The moment I made the shift over, I found someone that was posting content like what I felt called to post. The moment I made that shift, my first video got 275,000 views and it was off to the races wow. because I, I identified the bullseye. So that's the key. Don't You don't just copy what you think it's supposed to look like. You want to identify what direction you're going, find someone else that's going in that direction and kind of hook your bag, your wagon to them. And you can, you can kind of ride the way they've already had success. And that seems to make the biggest difference. So good, man. What key metrics are you guys tracking? weekly or monthly for your clients or telling them to track to to see progress like things like impressions engagement what are you guys tracking the two most important analytics to keep your eye on are number one your click-through rate and then number two your watch time those two are the most important no matter what. Now, other things will vary your engagement, your likes, your comments, your shares. Those things, they do matter, but they're, they're sprinkles on the, on the ice cream. The two foundational things you should pay attention to all the time and get the best at is your click-through rate, meaning someone sees your title, they see your thumbnail, and they click through to watch your video. And then number two, your watch time. So these are the two metrics that my strategy primarily focuses on. How to guarantee someone clicks on your video and how to guarantee they stick to the end, if not watch it more than one time. And if you can get a watch time over about 85, 90% on short form content, you're almost guaranteed to get tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of views. And if you can just get very high click-through rate on your videos, 
Combine that with high watch time, I mean, it's you're off to the moon at that point. And that's where we see a lot of the explosion. And then the key is, here's the golden nugget, consistency. If you can't stay consistent with it, then, then it won't work. So I always tell people, I can give you the strategy. I mean, I could take the horse to the water, but I can't make them drink. So doing it just one time isn't really enough. You know, you can have one video that goes viral, but it, it won't change the name of the game for you. You have to have consistent viral content, consistent content that's going out on a consistent basis and consistently reaching people. If you can just double down on consistency. It might be a grind. You know, I grinded for nine months before I was able to leave my nine to five and actually go full time online. I, it was a grind. I'd wake up an hour early before work. I'd split my lunchtime in half so I could make content. I'd stay up an extra three hours at night to do live streams and pump out content. I know the grind. Trust me. I was in the hustle and uh, I, I know it, it. I ate dirt for about nine months. But it was worth every moment. And if I could go back, I would do it all over again because where God brought me now, I, I mean, I wouldn't trade it for anything. So it might be a grind. It might be a hustle. Anyone listening right now, you might be going through that exact season right now. Stay consistent. Now, one video has the capacity to change your life, but you need more than one. But it really does only take one video to really change things. I know a guy who posted 170 days didn't see any traction. I think he had a less less than a thousand on YouTube. 170 days posted four times a day consistently. On the 171st day, one of his videos went viral. Imagine that's like a half a year without seeing any results. Imagine that. But then on the 171st day, he had a video got like 20 million views, and it brought a surge of momentum through his entire channel, launched him up to a couple million subscribers, and his life was never the same. So it just stay consistent. Don't give up. I like what it says in Galatians chapter six. Don't grow weary in doing good for surely you shall reap a harvest in due time. So don't grow weary. Stay strong. Stay consistent. Your time is coming.